In this video, you are going to discuss about the intrinsic muscles of the larynx. So, first uh, we will discuss the muscles one by one. The intrinsic uh, muscles of the larynx are those which are originating from the larynx and gets attached to the larynx. So, which are the muscles? We will draw the diagram first. So, we will draw the anterior view of the larynx. Focusing mainly on the cartilages here. What you are drawing here is the thyroid cartilage. The superior corner of the thyroid cartilage. This is the inferior corner of the thyroid cartilage. Next what we draw here is articulating with the inferior corner of the thyroid cartilage. We have the uh, cricoid cartilage. So this is the cricoid. And you have the epiglottis here and attached to the upper border of the cricoid cartilage you have the arachnoid cartilage here so this is the arachnoid cartilage yeah so this is the arachnoid cartilage so the, what he had drawn here is the anterior view of the larynx and now we will draw the posterior view so this is the posterior sorry this is the posterior view and uh, we will be drawing the anterior view now So this is the thyroid cartilage, this is the cricoid cartilage. So this is the superior corner thyroid cartilage, this is the inferior corner of the thyroid cartilage. This is the thyroid nose and this is the laryngeal prominence. We have discussed it in the previous videos. So this is the anterior view of the larynx, laryngeal cartilage. Now we will draw the lateral view also here. So this is the thyroid the inferior corner so this is the thyroid cartilage now this is the cricoid cartilage we have here is the arachnoid cartilage so this one is the arachnoid So we have here the tracheal rings here. So we will uh, discuss the muscles and ligaments. So here also you can see the epiglottis, the hyoid bone. Now we will discuss the muscles one by one. First muscle we are going to discuss about us the which muscle? That muscle is the posterior cricoarachnoid. So the name is posterior cricoarachnoid muscle. So posterior cricoarachnoid. Look at the name of this muscle. It is arising from the posterior aspect. Hence posterior cricoarachnoid. So it is. Uh, the name is cricoarachnoid so it is stretching between the cricoid and the arachnoid cartilage so and it is also from the name itself it is from the posterior aspect so how to draw this muscle so it is arising from the posterior aspect like this uh, on both sides you have this muscle so it is arising from the posterior surface of the lamina of the cricoid and it gets attached to the and it gets attached to the muscular process of the arachnoid castle. This is the muscular process. So the muscle is like this. So it is originating from the posterior surface of the lamina of the cricoid and gets inserted into the muscular process. On both sides you have this muscle like this.
So this is the posterior triquarial joint muscle. This is the muscle. So what is the action of this muscle? So just see that you have the uh, cartilage here. So this is the muscular muscular process of the retinal cartilage and this is the vocal process and again you have the muscular process and the vocal process now attached to the vocal process of the arytenoid cartilage you have the vocal folds or the vocal cords so this is the arytenoid cartilage this is a vocal process and this is a muscular process so attached to the vocal process you have the vocal cords or the vocal folds so this is the vocal cord so this is the muscular process so we have seen that uh, this muscle is attached to the muscular process of the arytenoid cartilage now what this muscle do it will pull the muscular process medially like this it will pull the muscular it will pull the muscular process medially so the medial movement of the muscular process will cause the abduction of the vocal cord so it will cause abduction abduction of the vocal cord so it will medially rotate the muscular process the medial rotation of the muscular process will cause lateral rotation of the vocal process which cause abduction of the vocal cord so action of this muscle is abduction of vocal cord so abduction of the vocal cord facilitates in the process of breathing so this is the only muscle which helps in abduction of the vocal cord this is the only abductor of the vocal cord so it is known as a safety muscle of the larynx because when this muscle is paralyzed on both sides the vocal cord remains adducted and it causes asphyxiation the breathing is not breathing is not facilitated so this muscle is also known as the safety muscle of larynx safety muscle of larynx So that is posterior trichoarytenoid. Now, another muscle which is arising from the posterior aspect is transverse arytenoid. That is also called the interarytenoid. It is arising from the posterior surface of arytenoid and gets inserted into the posterior surface of other arytenoid. So that this is the interarytenoid or transverse arytenoid. Interarytenoid. or transverse arytenoid or transverse arytenoid muscle so this uh, muscle which is stretching between the two arytenoids will keep the or it will stretch the two arytenoids together it will keep the two arytenoids together so when these two arytenoids come close to each other it will cause adduction of the vocal cords so it will keep the arytenoids close to each other which cause adduction of the vocal cord so the main function of this muscle is adduction of vocal cord adduction of vocal cord Now, which is the other muscle which can be seen here? We'll draw it with uh, another color. So, there is one muscle which is arising from the muscular process of one arytenoid and gets inserted into the apex of another arytenoid. So, arising, we will further 
ease of understanding we will draw it with the green color it should be drawn with the brown color actually so it is a receipt in the muscular process of an arachnoid and gets attached to the apex of opposite arachnoid so this muscle is present on both sides like this now a part of this muscle extends into the margins of the epiglottis also so this extension is known as array epiglottis muscle array epiglottic muscle array epiglotticus so this muscle is known as as this is oblique in shape this is known as oblique arachnoid and the extension of this is known as array epiglotticus so now what does this muscle do so it will keep the two arachnoids it will bring the two arachnoids close to each other as well as the epiglottis and it will narrow down the inlet of larynx so it will cause closure of inlet of larynx so action of this muscle is closes inlet of larynx so these are the muscles which can be drawn from the posterior aspect now we will look at the anterior aspect here so which are the muscles here we can see anterior aspect you can see the cricoid and the in, uh, thyroid so there is one muscle which is arising from this aspect that is the cricothyroid so now the cricothyroid it is arising from the lower border and the lateral surface of the it is arising from the lower border and lateral surface of the cricoid and gets attached into the inferior corner and the lower border. So it is like this. It is like this. So it is arising from the cricoid and gets inserted into the inferior border and the inferior corner of the thyroid. So this muscle is cricothyroid. Now what is the action of this muscle? So cricothyroid it causes rocking movements of the thyroid forwards and downwards at the cricothyroid joint. This it causes it causes downward movement of this. Uh, cricoid and so does thyroid cartilage and it stretches the arachnoid downwards so stretching of the arachnoid downwards will cause stretching or lengthening of the vocal cords so lengthening of the vocal cords will cause tension in the vocal cord so it is also known as the tensor of vocal cords the action is it tenses the vocal cord So as it pulls the arachnoid close to each other, it will pull the, uh, so that is, it pulls the arachnoids and it will pull the vocal cords. So the pulling of the vocal cords will also lead to adduction of the vocal cords. So it is also an adductor of vocal cord. Adductor of vocal cord. So that's all about the cricothyroid muscle. Now we look at the lateral aspect so on the lateral aspect there is another muscle which is known as the lateral cricoarachnoid lateral cricoarachnoid So from the name, uh, you can see that it is arising from the cricoid and gets inserted into the arachnoid cartilage. 
so as it is lateral it is arising from the lateral aspect of cricoid and get inserted into the arachnoid so it is arising from the lateral aspect of the cricoid and gets inserted into the anterior aspect of muscular process of like this so it is arising from the lateral surface of the lamina of the cricoid and gets inserted into the muscular process of the arachnoid that is the anterior aspect of muscular process of arachnoid so that is the lateral cricoid arachnoid now what this lateral cricoid arachnoid will do Uh, so we have seen that uh, this is the cricoid, uh, sorry this is the arachnoid and there is going to muscular process and vocal process attached to the vocal process we have the vocal cord so uh, the lateral cricoid arachnoid it will pull the it will pull the muscular process of the arachnoid laterally so it is pulled laterally muscular process of the arachnoid is pulled laterally so when this muscular process is pulled laterally it will cause pushing of the vocal process medially so when the vocal process is pushed medially it will cause it will cause adduction of the vocal cord so what happens the vocal process comes like this and it will cause adduction of the vocal cord so adduction of the vocal cord is the action of this muscle. What is the action? Adduction of vocal cords. So that is one and the muscle. Next muscle which is uh, arising from this aspect is the thyroarachnoid. So look at the name of this muscle that is thyroarachnoid so it is originating from the thyroid and gets inserted into the arachnoid so from which aspect of the thyroid it is originated it is originating from the angle of the thyroid on its posterior aspect and it gets inserted into the arachnoid on its anterolateral aspect that is on the anterolateral aspect of the arachnoid cartilage on both sides you have this so it is attached like this on the anterolateral aspect like this so and a part of this muscle that is the upper fibers of this muscle also extends into the epiglottis across the margins of the epiglottis and it forms the so this muscle which is originating from the ankle of the thyroid on its posterior aspect and gets inserted into the anterolateral aspect of arachnoid this portion is known as the thyroid this is known as thyroarachnoid arachnoid so and the, some of the fibers goes upwards and gets inserted into the epiglottis so this is known as this extension is called a part of this muscle Second part is known as thyroepiglotticus. Epiglotticus. Now, what does this thyroarachnoid do? So, the thyroarachnoid it will cause pulling of this vocal process forward. It will pull the vocal process forward. Sorry, it will pull the vocal cord forwards. So, when the vocal process is pulled forward it will cause shortening of the vocal cords because the vocal cords are attached to the vocal process so when the vocal process is pulled forward it will cause shortening of the vocal cords and it will relax the vocal cords so the main function is the relaxation it relaxes the vocal cord And the part of this muscle will extend into the 
vocal fold is known as some of this is projecting into the vocal fold that is known as vocalis so vocalis muscle is an extension of the thyroarytenoid into the vocal process vocalis muscle so vocalis muscle and the thyroarytenoid it relaxes the vocal cords by shortening the vocal cord vocalis muscle now what this thyroepiglottis which is actually the second part another part of this muscle do so it will cause closure of the laryngeal inlet it will sorry it will cause opening of the laryngeal inlet it keeps the laryngeal inlet open so what this another another muscle is the thyroepiglottis So it will keep the inlet of larynx open. Opens inlet of larynx. So we have seen the muscles which are at, uh, on the posterior aspect and the anterior aspect and the lateral aspect. Now we'll discuss uh, the functions briefly. So uh, we'll discuss the adductor for vocal cords adductor of vocal cord now tensor relaxes the vocal cord Now, muscles which close the inlet of larynx. And muscles which opens the inlet of larynx. So, which is the only one muscle which is the abductor of vocal cords and it facilitates breathing. And this is known as the safety muscle of larynx, which is that one and only one muscle, which is an abductor, is the posterior cricoarytenoid. Posterior cricoarytenoid. Now, which is which are the adductors? We have seen that the adductors are lateral cricoarytenoid. Then cricothyroid, then transverse arytenoid or interarytenoid, then there is another muscle that is a thyroarytenoid. So the thyroarytenoid also pulls the vocal cords forwards and it also causes adduction of vocal cords. So, so which is the tensor of the vocal cord? So only one muscle which tenses the vocal cord that is called the cricothyroid. So cricothyroid is the tensor of vocal cord. This is important. This is also very important. And which are the muscles which relaxes the vocal cords? These are the two muscles which pulls the vocal cords forwards into the thyroid which are this these are the thyroarytenoid so these are inserted into the anterior, anterior aspect of arytenoid and the vocalis which is an extension of this muscle which are the muscles which causes the closure of inlet of larynx this include the oblique arytenoid And an extension of this muscle into the margins of epiglottis, which is this array epiglotticus muscle. So, which muscle opens the inlet of larynx? 
that is thyro epiglotticus thyro epiglotticus so these are the functions of this muscle now the channel now is elevating this muscle so remember that the cricothyroid is supplied by the external laryngeal nerve external laryngeal nerve which is a branch of superior laryngeal nerve which is a branch of vagus vagus nerve laryngeal external laryngeal all other muscles are supplied by all others are supplied by the recurrent laryngeal nerve recurrent laryngeal so all muscles except the cricothyroid are supplied by the recurrent laryngeal nerve and the cricothyroid is supplied by the external laryngeal nerve so that's all about the intrinsic muscles of larynx thank you for watching this video to see more videos on my channel please subscribe the channel thank you